Hey guys, wanted to share a pen with you today that I recently got here in the mail, and it was kind of an oddity to me. I saw it advertised on eBay. So I went ahead and figured I'd go ahead and give it a try. Moon Man. I've got several of their pens already, so I figured, why not? Let's give it a try, because I've been pleasantly surprised uh, at a decent quality that I've been able to get uh, with the Chinese-manufactured Moon Man. Uh, and you notice the logo's a little different if you've been getting any Moon Man pens or seen their stuff. Um, and uh, this right here in Chinese does say exactly what it says here. Feel the temperature of writing. Now, I don't exactly understand that particular phraseology, but okay. Feel the temperature of writing. So it arrived in this plain, simple box. Nothing special on the outside, no markings. Uh, uh, I didn't see any uh, stickers on it for inventory purposes or any such thing. Uh, but I went ahead and uh, uh, figured I'd open it up and show you what is in it. You have a generic book booklet that comes from Moon Man, and uh, you can see here that it has various methods of how to fill the pen, uh, which is not a bad thing. And you will see the eyedropper instructions uh, are right here. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. Uh, when it arrived, it had the cellophane wrap here that the pen came in. Now this was an absolutely adorable pen, I thought. When I first looked at it, I said, ooh, that's a nice little fat boy there. A nice little uh, chunky one in the hand. So I said, man, that is absolutely adorable. And I'm kind of a sucker for clear pens. I like demonstrators. And uh, there were like four different colors that were available. They were all at different price points, uh, depending upon from whom you go to buy on uh, on eBay. And uh, I've here's where I got mine from in the price that I paid for this particular pen, including shipping, uh, in order to get it to me. So, um, you know, when I looked at those four different colors, I said, well, I kind of like the others. They're actually nice looking. Uh, I don't have anything against the other colors, but, you know, I'm kind of a sucker for a good, clear demonstrator fountain pen. So I went ahead and picked this one up, and it just arrived here at my door yesterday. So uh, I was able to take it apart, play with it, see how I liked it. It does come with an eyedropper or a pipette, uh, if you ever wanted to use that. Personally, I'm not likely to use it, and I really never have used the ones that uh, are included uh, with the pens themselves. But the pen... The instruction booklet and that pipette are all that came in the box. So taking a look at it, it's it's a fairly short pen, but it's not as short as it really at first looked. Um, the pictures that they had on eBay were in someone's palm, and I said, man, that is just a... They call it a mini. Now, it's a mini in that it is a short pen. I guess you could call it a pocket pen, if you would. Uh, but um, is this really one that I'm going to fit in my pocket? Probably not with that kind of girth, uh, at least not in a shirt pocket. I may throw it in a, a pocket in my pants or something, but really none of the uh, pen sleeves that I've got are going to be able to fit it. For instance, a single pen sleeve like this, man, I don't know so that's going to be able to fit. No, nope, that's definitely not going to fit in a single pen sleeve. And it's definitely not going to fit in my double pen sleeve. I may have one uh, or two that are wide enough to fit two or three pens that this may fit in. But uh, quite honestly, it's not going to work. But, so let's go ahead and open her up and take a look at it. So you pull it apart. Obviously, you've got a nice looking cap here. The cap perfectly clear. And you can see right here, the threads are up here for where this uh, section actually would screw in. So the screw action does not happen here at the end of the cap. It happens up here inside right there. So these threads right here at the end of the section actually meet up here and that's where you've got the thread action to go ahead and secure that pin inside that cap. I also noticed here that it's got some more threads up here as well. And those threads are for this dome or the finial. And uh, then you've got this clip that is essentially a ring and a nice little short but serviceable and fairly stiff metal clip. So what you can do, if you so choose, is you can take that off. And I actually did get it earlier, uh, but it's something that you probably need to get a grip. Oh, there you go. I did, I did loosen it up sufficiently. So this actually comes right off. So you've got that dome right here. 
with that gold trim and you basically have a stamped metal clip and that actually just sits right back on top and that screws right back in place. So I screwed that back here in place and you know I'm kind of um, uh, kind of a stickler about things like that. I went ahead and put that clip uh, and it lines up right with the middle of the word Moon Man as you can see here. I may show you a picture that actually has that better uh, where you can see that a little bit better. So you pull that off. The pen will post if you wanted to post it and uh, you know, you go to write with it, and it's actually a decent length if you're going to end up posting this particular pen. Um, and it's good and chunky. So now my understanding is for people who have real bad arthritis in their hands, they need a beefier pen. Well, this is probably not one of those uh, that would be objectionable to you that may actually fulfill that need for you. So, you know, that sits nice and beefy because I've got to be honest with you, it's kind of stubby. If, uh, if you go to take it and go to write with it here. I've got some statistics that I'll put up that'll show you all of that. So, set that down. And you've got a nothing special nib. It does just have a, uh, a monotone or a silver tone nib. Now, when this pen was available, I essentially had either fine or extra fine as my options. And I went ahead and opted for the fine. I really don't like fine nibs. I don't like extra fine nibs especially, so I may yet change this nib. Why? Well, because it is just a number six nib, and quite honestly, it does come right out. It does have a nib section, like you're going to find in a bunch of other pens as well. So it is removable. It does just screw out. This will friction fit along with this section to be able to pull out and to be able to put in uh, a different nib. Now, I may put in like a 1.1 stub or a medium nib. I do have some Yovo nibs that I may put into this, but it does take a number six nib. So I just may very well go ahead and do that, but that does screw into that section. That section does very nicely screw off from there, and you can see that you've got that thread there to go into that barrel and at this end that's where you would put your nib section back in. What I like about this is it does come out for cleaning. Very easy cleaning. That's one thing's about the nice removable screw out nibs. Uh, these little modular nibs are great when you want to clean it because all you got to do is essentially just pull it out, run a little bit of water under the sink, uh, straight, straight through this section. And the, the thing is that's pretty cool about this is if you end up getting some ink down inside, which I do from time to time. I got a few pens right now actually that are demonstrators that have gotten some ink down down inside that cap. Well here if I wanted to I could just unscrew that dome, flush a little water out and the thing comes nice and clean. So those are your parts for the Moon Man Q1. Uh, Moon Man has a, uh, a habit of calling things with an M or a C or, um, or, or a Q. Okay, cool. Now, when I look at something Q1 in the business world, that means first quarter, January, February, and March of the year. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. Now, I'm debating whether or not I'm going to uh, put on some silicone grease. I probably will, just because I want to make sure I don't get any leaks. So, I'll put a little bit of silicone grease probably around that thread, so that when I put that in, it'll go ahead and seal very nicely. And if I'm feeling really ambitious, I may just go ahead and put some a little bit of silicone grease around here. And I've actually had to do that um, not just on demonstrator pens. I actually had to do that on um, a custom made pen uh, that uh, one particular company had made with just a, a very loose tolerance around that because it kept leaking some ink. So um, I'll go ahead and I'll give you a comparison. I'll give you some statistics on this particular pen. I'm going to fill it. Now one of the things about filling this particular pen that I'm going to show you now is you have several options. Yes, you can use that pipette that came with it that I showed you. Another thing that you could do is you could use something like this. This is a blunt tip syringe. You could just uh, suck up the ink that you want, put it inside of that uh, barrel, and just expel that ink out of the, the blunt tip syringe, starting at the bottom and work your way up, and, and fill that up, and then screw your section into it. 
Um, what I do like about pens this size and what I have done before is I just would take an ink sample of one that I wanted to try. In this case, I'm going to try some Noodler's Cardinal Kestrel. Yeah, that ink that's on that label, that came from uh, Transport. <laughs> this is actually a reddish ink, and uh, that came from an ink sample that leaked inside of... Um, a little Ziploc bag and got all over that label. So I've never tried this particular ink yet, and I will go ahead and give that a try here momentarily. So let me go ahead and grease up my pen, uh, get that ready, and uh, while I'm working on that, you guys can go ahead and uh, maybe see a few statistics. did was all I, I took this little tiny jar of silicone grease and I put a little bit on those threads I did put a little bit on that uh, that modular nib in there so I do have that greased up and ready to go I've got that nice little hole right here ready and open so I'm gonna set that down and one of the things you better be sure that you're not gonna have more ink in a sample than that will hold I already know that this is probably about a two and a half mil uh, fill and these are two milliliter uh, ink samples so I should be good to go so I'm just gonna do this deal right here turn it over and voila I've got uh, some two to two and a half mils right there I'm gonna go ahead and screw that down in screw that into place and now, you can see that I've got a nice red, hopefully beautiful ink, because I have not used this ink yet. So this uh, Noodler's Cardinal Kestrel, for the very first time. Let's go ahead and set that down. So he's a big boy. He will sit in that tray and take up the entire width of that tray. But how does it uh, compare? Well, um, let me show you a couple other pens, and I'm going to start with other Moon Mans. The Moon Man M2, some of you are familiar with that particular pen. That's also a demonstrator. You can tell I have an affinity for demonstrators because there's the Moon Man C1. I decided not to go ahead and eyedropper that one. just didn't feel like doing it. Let's go ahead and look at another uh, allegedly pocket pen that is a demonstrator. How about this one right here, the Stipula Passaporto? And you can see the size difference. I mean, this absolutely dwarfs the pa Passaporto. Then again, most pens do. So, But if you're going to look at other pocket pens, how about uh, a Caveco Sports? Let's see, go ahead and put those down in so you can see. Look how skinny those ones are by comparison if you're going to look at a pocket pen. Uh, one more Moon Man, the Moon Man M600. Obviously a very different design of pen for the Moon Man. To put this all into perspective, uh, a pen that should be very known by a lot of people, this right here, if you want to put that in, will be a Schaefer Pop, uh, the Darth Vader edition. So you can see just how big and wide that pen is to this. The absolute girth of this particular pen. So, I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. I'm going to see if I can get some ink down through that section uh, and see if I can get some ink flowing. And then we're going to see how this, uh, this big, beautiful, fat baby will actually write for me. And I'll see if I actually like it, because if I don't, like I said, I'm going to change out that nib uh, and maybe put in uh, something that's uh, more my style, maybe something that's more of a medium uh, and uh, something a little bit smoother. You never know. I don't know how smooth it is yet. It may be a fantastic fine nib, but I just don't know yet. It really took no time at all for that ink to come down into that section and and fully saturate uh, that section, uh, that nib unit in that nib. So that really happened pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try it first with it posted and to see if I like writing with it posted. You do get a little back weighting on that thing. Um, it feels a little different when you do that. I don't know if I like 
the stubby stub, as I would call it, the stubby stub kind of writing. But let's go ahead and see what it looks like when I just put that on there. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Um, this is the the Moon Man, the Q1. This is a fine nib. And it definitely does live up to that description of being a fine nib. Oh, nice steel nib. It's not the smoothest thing. I, you know, if I'm going to keep the fine nib, I would actually personally sit here with a little bit of micro mesh and spend a little time smoothing it out. I'm just kind of particular that way. I like my pens to be as buttery smooth as I can get them. It's not a very wet writer, but... It'll do okay uh, on this particular Rhodia pad because obviously Rhodia does not absorb the ink as much. Uh, this is a Noodler's Cardinal Kestrel Red, which I kind of like, you know. Um, I don't use red ink all that much, but every so often I just wanted a change. I wanted something different. I wanted to look look at something pretty as it sloshes around in my pen. So I'm going to go ahead and take off that cap and let's see how I do with the, the stubbiness. So here it is without posting. I can tell you I definitely like it uh, posted better. I can feel that cr almost kind of cramping my fingers. I can feel that in my fingers, uh, writing it stubby like that. So it's definitely, for me, it's going to go better being posted when I go to write with it. So, you know, like I said, fine nib, okay. I would rate this as an okay nib. Definitely not a high quality nib. Um, I would say that if you uh, like a smooth um, nib, you might want to upgrade your nib. Uh, whether or not you can actually get a, a, a just a nib uh, to be able to screw in there, I don't know. I do have others that are removable like that. I wasn't going to go through them all and try them one by one because that's a lot of cleaning. Um, but uh, And I have a couple that I know that I like so that when those pens actually run out of ink, I might go ahead and try them. But uh, this is just, it, it's an okay nib. You know, I paid $23 or so on eBay. I understand that you can find them also on uh, other sellers. I know some people have been finding these on Amazon, eBay. And uh, I actually had to have this shipped in to me direct from China. It surprisingly didn't take as long to get here from China as other pens did. It actually got here faster than I thought it would. Now, some other things I'm going to have to figure out about this particular pen is how I'm going to store it. Because um, this, I don't know if it's going to fit in my pen drawers with the, the kind of girth that I've got on this baby. I mean, it's bigger and fatter than my 149, um, than some of my other oversized pens, uh, just in terms of sheer width and diameter of the, the cap and of the barrel. So um, I'm going to have to find out how I'm going to store this uh, this bad boy. But the Moon Man Q1, I mean, if you're looking for kind of a novelty, something that's just plain adorable. I mean, this is a very pretty pen. <laughs> and like I said, I'm a sucker for clear pens, for demonstrators. I love to look at the ink slosh around, the air bubble go back and forth. It's just me, something that I enjoy. Um, I've just got a real soft spot for them, and I accumulate a bunch of them. And yeah, and I keep accumulating, and I keep accumulating them. So I figured the Q1 would be worth uh, the effort, and I'd get the chance to go ahead and share it here with you. I do like the gold trim. I, I kind of like the, the workmanship that went into it. Uh, some people would complain about the workmanship when you look here, and you actually see that little kind of a point on the end of um, the drilling into that plastic on that barrel or that acrylic uh, because it uh, actually shows the uh, the drill bit and uh, comes down kind of a point. Some people are sticklers about that um, and think that it should be flat if it's going to be quality. That does not bother me whatsoever. I mean, if that's the biggest complaint you've got about a pen 
eh, you know, they're mass produced in China. And, uh, you know, we're kind of glad that we can get these at a decent price. I mean, I like this as much, if not better, than that Stipula Passaporto. Uh, it's a little better to write with, it's bigger, and uh, holds a lot more ink than the uh, Passaporto does as well. Uh, maybe not a lot more, but it definitely holds more ink. So, anyway, there you go. Um, that's my take on the Q1 uh, by Moon Man. Moon Man has been doing a fairly decent job on some of their pens. They're not upper-end pens. They're definitely not, you know, the bottom of the barrel. They're actually halfway decent quality uh, steel nibs, nothing special. Um, but they're going to work, and they're going to work well. I haven't had any trouble with any of the Moon Man pens that I've had.